Welcome to our training. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about speed grader. So we're going to go through and give you a couple of options on ways to access it, um, things that you can use inside of speed grader to annotate, hopefully help speed up your workflow, but also talk about a couple of the limitations that it has so that you know exactly what um, you can do going into speed grader. So um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the screencast side now and we'll walk through some things. And uh, if you have any questions afterwards, please feel free to contact us at OLITS um, and uh, we can help you out. So the first thing that we need to be able to do is to access our speed grader. And there's a couple different ways to do it and I'll walk you through a couple of those ways right now. First of all, if you're in your gradebook and you click, if you're near an assignment and you hover over, you'll get this little down arrow. If you click on that, you'll see that speed grader is an option. That's one way that you can get in there. The other way is if you are within your assignment and you're looking at your assignment, you will see the speed grader tab on the right hand side. You can click on that. But if you're in an assignment that doesn't have a whole lot of options within speed grader, discussions are a good example. If you happen to be inside of a discussion, you're not going to see the speed grader on the right hand side, but on this little three dot drop down, if you click on that, you can access speed grader from there as well. So those are the three main ways that you can access speed grader. Um, again, once you know how to get there, um, you can kind of do all the other things you need to within speed, speed grader and we'll show you that too. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit or enter, sorry, speed grader. And this is the interface that you're going to see and I'll walk you through from the top left here. First of all, this little check icon on a book, that's your grade book. Anytime you click on that, it's going to take you directly back to your grade book. This bell icon, this is to mute or unmute your assignment. So if you click on that, you have the option to mute the assignment. This is good, you know, if, if you don't want students to be getting notifications about grades or wondering if they didn't, you know, haven't their assignment wasn't graded but somebody else was, anything like that, so you can mute the assignment. It's important to remember though that you do need to unmute the assignment when you are finished grading. So if students are saying they can't see their grades and, you're, and you know you graded them, that could be an easy troubleshooting that you probably just need to go back and unmute the assignment. To unmute it, you simply click on it and then hit unmute the assignment. And then they will get all the notifications that something has been graded. Um, and then you will be good to go. And then the third thing on the top left here is settings. You got a few options within settings. Um, the first is that you can sort either by alphabetically their last name, by the date they submitted the assignment, or perhaps by the submission status. In other words, it still needs grading or it hasn't been submitted, so you can see them in that order as well. And the last option you can use is to hide student names. Now this could be useful if you are maybe just trying to make sure that you're, I know I used to teach K-12 for a while and I know no matter how we try, we can definitely have some biases about students and assume certain things are going to happen. So it's just, you know, a good way to maybe just read an assignment without having some of those preconceived ideas of what a student's going to do. Now, of course, once we get to know our students, we may actually be able to tell even without their names. But again, this is something that can help you um, maybe in those situations where you don't want to see the student's name. So I will uncheck that now, but that's something that you can do. Um, let's continue up to the top here and we'll see that it tells you how many of students, how many have been graded, um, and so then you can kind of get an idea of how many uh, submissions here too. So two out of four have submitted, zero out of four have been graded. Carla is one of our students here, and you can navigate through your students with the arrows. So you can go from assignment to assignment by doing the arrows that way. You can also do the drop down and choose students. So the orange icon indicates that they have submitted something, but it hasn't been graded. And once it's graded, which I'll show you in a second, you'll, you'll see a check mark there. So that's a good visual interface to show you sort of how to do speed grader and know what's going on in speed grader. So let's go ahead and grade Carla's, and let's talk about the interface here. From top left up here, you have the option to download. If you click on this, you can download the assignment. Again, within SpeedGrader, you may not have to, but you can download it if you want to, if that's the way you like to grade papers. The next thing we'll talk about here on the top is the zooming. You can zoom in and out so that you can see it better. And you can also make it go to full screen um, if you'd like to. You're not gonna get a real good representation of that on the video, but yeah, you can go to full screen and um, just sort of only look at the paper and that could help you as well. 
Now let's talk about the annotations. So this little bubble icon, you first of all select it and you'll see that it's highlighted with the white background so you know that's what's selected. You can choose any color you want, it really doesn't matter, uh, it's just to sort of let students know there's something there. So this can be really good for punctuation, like say here I thought, oh this needed to be a comma or something. So I can say, you know, check punctuation use. Okay, so that's it, and then you hit enter, and then now you have that option there, and it's tied to that comment. So again, students can see these comments, and they can go in and check out what you had to say in those spots. So that's one type of comment that you can do. You can also highlight, and again, we're at the same situation here where you can choose um, a color to highlight, and then all you do is select the text area that you want to highlight, Theoretically, there we go. Um, and it, it, it again, if you just click and hold, it will drag to wherever you want it to, like this. My computer was a little slow for that first one. And again, you have the option when you highlight, just like you had when you dropped that little um, notification mark there, that you can comment on it. So you can explain something. You say like, "Great concept," or you know, whatever you want to say to them, so that they know that you're paying attention and that you are actually reading their work and you're grading it and you can give them some solid interactions with it. Um, the other option for annotation, and I don't know how this would work real well in a text assignment, but you can add text to directly to an assignment um, over the top of an assignment. But again, with a text assignment, it seems odd that you would add text, but you can choose a background color or no background, or you can have text color as well. So depending on what the assignment is, that type of an entry might actually uh, be helpful. But I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. And as you can see with that and with all of these, when you sort of hover or click on them, you have the option to hit the trash can. So if you decide, oh, I don't want to do that, you can definitely get rid of it. And you can also do that from the comment standpoint too. If you weren't happy with the comment, you click on the trash icon and you can get rid of the comment there as well. Okay, so now that we've seen the text, we can also do the strike through. And again, um, if you're grading grammar or if you uh, want them to take something out of, the out of a paragraph, um, there's an easy way to do that as well. And again, choose any color you want. And then it's the same thing. You're just going to select and then you'll see that it is getting rid of, um, it'll put a strike through there. Now the cool thing about this too is while this is selected, if that color doesn't seem to work for you, you can change the color after it has been selected. And uh, I think the red's probably the one that shows up best. And again, you have the option to comment and say whatever you want, and it's tied directly to that strike through. Okay, I'm not going to leave a comment, so I'll delete that. But that's the strike through. And then finally, um, and this is probably a better used thing if you have a tablet or if you have um, one of the new computers that allows you to use the touch screen, whether you have a pen or not. Um, but yeah, you can actually write or draw in the things on here. And I'm using the mouse, so it's not really working well for me in terms of what it looks like. But yeah, that's the option. And again, you can comment on that as well by clicking the comment box. I'm going to also delete that. I don't need that. And I will confirm. So those are the annotations. And then finally, if you need a more structured like box or something to put around one of the things you want to draw attention to, Again, same thing. You have the box, you can change the color of the box, and then of course you can leave a comment. So, nice job. Um, and you will notice here that a reply comes up. You can reply, so if you wanted to make two comments about the same thing, but they were different comments, again, or maybe just, again, I'm not sure why you'd want to do it, but that option is available for you to reply to yourself, or your students can actually reply. Now the notifications aren't really well done yet, and I, I'm, they're working on it to my understanding, and hopefully they'll get better. But students could reply to you on a comment. You would just have to go in and check. You're not gonna get a notification. So if you really want them to reply to something and have a communication, I would suggest using the inbox or emailing them and getting a direct response that way. But the option is there, and hopefully um, they'll put some notification uh, opportunities or options in there at some point. But again, it gives that opportunity for dialogue and the students can reply and you can see what they've replied if you go back into SpeedGrader. So that takes care of all of the annotation things. So you may not want to annotate, you may just want to grade. And the cool thing about SpeedGrader is if you have um, 
if you want to add the grades, you just put them in, and it has as soon as you enter, it's saved, and that's their grade. So you can automatically see a couple of, of things have changed on the top here. You see that now one out of four have been graded, and you see that the average is 45 out of 50. So it will keep that going as you go, so you have a nice visual representation. So as you're grading, you can kind of say, like, wait a minute, a lot of my students aren't getting this. And then maybe as you're grading, you can sort of do some interventions and say, hey, Let's resubmit our assignments or, or whatever you might want to do because students aren't quite grasping it. Again, if you now go to this drop down, you can see the visual cue that there's a check mark, so you know that that's been graded. The only other person so far is Stephanie that has I have not graded that submitted it, so let's go ahead and click on hers and grade it. And let's give her a uh, 40. Now, she's not going to like that. She submitted a PowerPoint, and it's important to realize that PowerPoint is also one of the file types submitted um, in this doc viewer. There are so many file types that are, sub that are available. PDFs um, can be used in the same way. Um, spreadsheets can be used in the same way. Doc, old doc, doc X, older doc formats, same thing. There's a lot of files that can be supported through this doc viewer in SpeedGrader. So I can do the same things that I could do um, with her uh, paper, I can highlight the text here within uh, PowerPoint. I can comment. I can go through all those things. So if it if it is has the ability to be viewed within the doc type viewer, you're going to get all of these options, which is really cool. So you can go through and do those things. Now, the other thing that we'll mention is if you have an assignment that there is a um, let's go back to the gradebook. And let's go into another assignment. Now this one, my term paper assignment, has a rubric. So the cool part about that, if I go into SpeedGrader, is that you're going to see I can view the rubric within SpeedGrader. And I can change the view um, panel here. I can get out of, of, of just make it completely on uh, the assignment. Or I can stretch this out so I can have more view of my rubric. Um, so this little this pane here in the middle you can adjust by clicking and dragging left and right. So now I can actually go through within SpeedGrader and I can say, oh yeah, four points out of this, four points out of this, and four there. And now I, I do have to click save when I use a rubric. Let's, let's go ahead and check out some of the uh, ways that you can comment. Now I've done some comments here. Great paper, that's a good text one. Then I also did a video. So let's show you different ways that you can do general overall comments for papers within SpeedGrader. So not just these annotated things on the paper, but overall comments for your students. So the first thing you can do is just simply type one. That's it. Nothing difficult about that. And hit submit. And now that is in there. And it has been submitted. And they can see that comment as well. And they should get um, notifications of these things happening as well. So um, on the right-hand side, anything that you do, um, grade. And so you see type on, you see obviously type one, and I didn't put it. Okay, so that's one option. You can just add a comment. So the next option is, I think it's kind of cool, you can add a video comment. Um, it's something that I think we should be considering doing uh, more often. You might get some flash notifications that want you to allow it to record. Um, but you can see that you can just say record, hey, awesome job on the assignment, stop, and then save it, and then that goes directly into your line. It's a media comment, so you can comment to them. Uh, video feedback, I recommend it, especially in online courses, because it gives you a little bit more personal connection. The students know you're actually the one grading, which is kind of cool. All right, and then finally, the last option that you have is what's speech recognition, which it actually works really well. Um, so all you have to do is hit record, and then you'll notice that it works really well. The speech recognition works, and if you just add like a period, it will put a period in there. If you have a question mark, it will put that in there. So it really works quite well if you just want to use speech to text. And you hit stop, and then that will populate, and then you just hit submit, and then... Perfect. There you go. So those are the, the three ways that you can do general comments. Um, and that's really about it with SpeedGrader. I will mention that if you go into a discussion, so let's go back to the rubric. If you go into a discussion, you are not going to uh, have the full, and actually let's call up another website here just so you can see. 
you're not going to have the full, if you notice on top here, you're not going to have the annotations. In, within a discussion, that's just not an option in Canvas. You can't annotate discussions. And probably you should be in the discussion anyway if you want to interact with students. That's a good way to interact with them. So you can see all of their comments, including their replies um, directly in SpeedGrader. So you can grade right there based on did they do all of the necessary requirements for the discussion. And you can also click on view the full discussion thread. Uh, it gets a little messy, obviously, when it's a, a big discussion, but that is an option for you as well. So that's sort of how it works within SpeedGrader um, discussions. Again, you can't annotate, but you can see all of their discussions in grade right within there, and you can add comments um, to that assignment. Again, unless it's something very personal with the student that they need, I, I, I recommend getting in there in the discussion board and actually mixing it up. And then finally, if you're going to use a, a Google Doc assignment, this is what that looks like in SpeedGrader. You have full edit capabilities because they've shared it with you, so you can comment within the Google Doc format. It's not the same annotations as SpeedGrader, but you can see the whole document right in SpeedGrader, and you can add your comments and add your grades right in SpeedGrader as well. So that's also pretty cool. So this is just a basic overview of SpeedGrader, and hopefully it can help your workflow. Again, if you do have any questions, you can come see us at OLITS or you can email us um, and let us know what they are and we can help you out with SpeedGrader or any other Canvas needs. So thanks for joining our training and uh, we hope to see you at another training. Bye.